Welcome in everybody. I'm Will with MNS and I want to do another Auburn centric video. Uh, the past couple weeks uh, are specifically after the Arkansas game. I recorded a video, but I decided not to put it out because I didn't feel like it was all that substantive. I didn't feel like I was saying anything that hadn't already been said uh, within the Auburn community, right? Um, obviously, wildly frustrating. Uh, stretch of games, uh, including this past week against Oklahoma. Uh, but I think the flaws, or the critical flaws at least, have changed the way they've identified themselves, but have remained the same. So I, uh, and I want to just go ahead and uh, go ahead and give a shout out to Brooks Austin, uh, his film breakdown of, uh, Auburn's passing attack against Oklahoma was fantastic, and it's sort of, I think, for all Auburn fans should be a light bulb moment to recognize uh, maybe why certain things work and don't work within this offense. And I also want to give a shout-out to Cole Kublik, of course, Auburn alum. Um, Cole Kublik, I, 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 so I, we, I did the college football podcast earlier today, right? And I had to record it a couple different times because – uh, just various things popped up. So I can't remember if this made the final recording, but I talked about how it's really nice. Uh, and sometimes I need to hear other people say a thing that I'm thinking to sort of validate. Cause I'm just some 21 year old kid, right? Like I'm not some film genius. It's not like I was a super successful football player at any phase of the game, you know? So I, I don't like to just run my mouth. Right. But uh, when Cole Kublik says something that I also think, yeah, then I want to kind of platform it and uh, sort of bring it forth to the Auburn community. Because in a way, I feel like the things I'm going to talk about are actually pretty optimistic, but still wildly frustrating. So one word, and everybody will say it with me, honestly, whether you're an Auburn fan or not, if you keep up with SEC football, you know this. What has been the critical flaw for the Auburn Tigers so far in 2024? Three, two, one. I hope you said turnovers because obviously turnovers, right? So obviously uh, against Cal and against Arkansas, turnovers were a problem in the sense that there was a lot of them. We turned the ball over five times in both of those games. That is it's patently unacceptable. You can't turn the ball over five times and win. Uh, not against Cal, not against the woke agenda out there at Berkeley, and not against uh, certainly not against uh, a Hogs team that I think is sneakily very, very tough. You know, same thing with Cal. I think they're sneakily very tough. I found that out the hard way when we played them. So, uh, with that, it, it was the quantity of the turnovers, just the sheer amount of turnovers. And you had the situational stuff, but for instance, the last pick that Peyton Thorne threw against Cal, uh, yeah, it was bad, but you're pressing, trying to get back in the game. Like, I understand. Like, it's not a typical turnover uh, based on just making a bad read or something like that. It's You know it's a tight window and you're just hoping and praying. You're gripping and ripping. As I've been saying recently, I said a lot on the show, I think. Um, against Oklahoma, uh, it was one. One critical turnover that people point to and say uh, cost us the game. I agree and disagree with that thought because, yes, it, obviously it was the pick six that put Oklahoma on top that sealed the game. Auburn had multiple shots afterwards to get back into the thing, but it just didn't formulate. Uh, there wasn't enough time left, and this is not an offense that is going to make a late rally. I, I think the recipe for Auburn to win a game is to get out in front and control and manage the clock in the second half, and that is the part where I'm going to get a little bit bold. I think, and I feel really uh, jerkish saying this because Hugh Freeze and everybody on that coaching staff, they are 20 times more accomplished than I am. They know more, or they have forgotten more about the game of football than I will ever know. I, I want to say that very bluntly. And I believe in my heart that what I'm about to say, they would agree with. The fourth quarter was managed really, really 
really horribly. Like I think really, really, really horribly. So everyone knows Oklahoma's offense is not good. Not only are they not good, but they're not healthy. They're missing like their top five receivers. They they have to start uh, the guy that came into the season as the backup because the projected starter turned out to be kind of horrible. Like this is not a good Oklahoma offense. So Auburn starts off this game really solid for all intents and purposes. Uh, Peyton Thorne was trusting what he saw pre-snap for the most part, and we'll get to that. And uh, he made some really good throws. I thought the offense comp, uh, was fairly complimentary. And I thought, uh, and when I say that, I mean uh, the offense, we finally slowed down the pace. And that's why I think the game plan for the Auburn Tigers is developing and changing. Because since Gus Malzahn, uh, and I even mean his tenure as a coordinator, tempo. Tempo has been really important on the planes, whether it had been Gus, Harson, Freeze. That's just been uh kind of the case and as a kid because i started watching auburn in 2012 ish you know so great year to start watching first off second off i i you know every announce team is just talking about the up-tempo offense and how it's changing the way the game is played and the rpos and this that and the third right i think as a, a game college football has just caught up to both of those elements of the game. I don't think you can structure your offense around tempo and I don't think you can structure your offense around RPOs at least not at the SEC level. Maybe at the lower G5 level and maybe uh, and, and maybe still at the FCS level. I think defenses are too good. I really I really do. Um because now I think we're at a point where Tempo uh, negatively affects the offense more than it catches the defense off guard so, because uh, defenses are just much more athletic and fast than they were 15 years ago. So uh, I like that evolution, at least that we slowed down the tempo. We milked the clock in the first half. We ran the ball, which, man, if we could have just done that in some critical situations later on, we'd probably be talking about it. A three and two Auburn team instead of a two and three one, but we'll get to that. So I really liked seeing that because that was substantive change. And and you know maybe I just didn't. I, I don't want to say that oh this was new against Oklahoma because maybe this has been the case all year. I certainly didn't feel like we were making a conscious effort against Cal or against Arkansas to slow the tempo down. But against Oklahoma, it was very 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 clear. Hey. We know this offense we're going against is not all that great. We think our defense absolutely can match up against them in every phase and layer of that side of the matchup, right? So let's just do what we're good at and control the clock. I do think, uh, at least in the NFL game, I think time of possession is overrated. I don't think it matters much anymore. I think in college football, time of possession absolutely is crucial. I really do feel that way. And that's why I felt so good ending the first half uh, up 21 to, I, I want to say we were up 21 to 10 at the end of the first half. It might've, it might've still been 14 to 10. I can't, uh, I, I apologize. Um, but anyway, point is, so going into the second half, uh, the offense certainly stalled, which I see that coming. And now watching film study and understanding how one-dimensional the offense is, yeah, we're not really, unless they're, <laughs> unless Hugh Freeze has been uh, hiding some tricks up his sleeve, we're not a team that's going to throw anything new at you in the second half. So odds are, if you're able to adjust, you probably have us figured out. And I think that is partially... Uh, due to one-dimensional play calling, but I think the one-dimensional play calling might have to do with the personnel, specifically at quarterback. Uh, we don't have... A, I'll put it this way, because I, I don't know this objectively, but we certainly don't have a guy that Hugh trusts to make reads after the snap and make uh, go through his progressions. And honestly, there were times in this game where even... Though the reads were condensed, 
you still have Peyton Thorne, who clearly is not confident in what he sees, and he's not confident in himself to make uh, throws in the intermediate at all. Uh, so now this is where we get into the one-dimensionality of the Auburn offense. So, and this is what I talk about Brooks Austin. He, he made the astute observation that uh, with all of our passing plays, either – the uh, the routes are aimed towards the box, so uh, between the tackles ish, you know, and about 10, 15, maybe twenty yards ish. I'd say ten to fifteen uh, in that range. They're either in there in that box or they're a deep shot, and. Typically, and this is why I think it's a little bit antithetical. In football, basic conventional wisdom is that you throw against a loaded box. But when all of your reads consist of short routes over the middle of the field, a loaded box can contain the inside run and the bulk of your passing game. So that's one thing. Uh, Second... We lean heavily on RPOs. I mentioned that we don't have a guy on campus that Hugh trusts to make reads post-snap. So RPOs, a lot of the time, are pre-snap reads. Uh, You decide probably where you're going with the ball before you snap it. And yes, you absolutely can adjust after the ball is snapped, but that's really hard, man. That's like a split-second Ball is in your hands. You're turning to hand it off, and you're and Brooks Austin talks about this, but you're looking out of the corner of your eye to see, oh, is that linebacker dropping? Is he coming? Is someone else rotating down, or is that safety rotating back? That's that's just not. These it's hard enough to read a defense when you're dropping back for two two and a half seconds, for like half a second. Like that's why I can't blame the pick six solely on Peyton Thorn. Was it a bad read? Yes, but. Based on the film that he had watched, I assume, uh, leading up to the game, he knew that based on that look, odds are that linebacker was rushing. Uh, I want to see I, I feel bad because I feel like I'm going to mess up his name. I think it was Kip Lewis. I, I apologize if, I've got, if I'm butchering that, if I've got the wrong guy, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. Uh, Kip Lewis had uh, rushed uh, from that same exact spot pre-snap in a similar situation, and this is where Cole Keeble comes into the deal, or talking about it, and the vast majority of the time, he's gotten a QB hit. So Peyton Thorne is clearly looking at that, saying, like, okay, well, he's going to rush me, so my answer for that is get the ball out quick. Feel the Like, I'm going to be hot. And that's, again, that's the problem. Deciding whether you're hot is supposed to be a post-snap read. Uh, because... <laughs> uh, because you know, you know you're hot because that person is screaming in your face. You can't, you can't structure an offense around deciding pre-snap they are or are not blitz. Because college defenses rotate, they show different looks at you. The the shell will change post-snap, especially against this kind of offense where they know they can really take advantage. And I think that has been the problem all year. So. I don't want to present a problem without presenting a solution. By the way, so uh, obviously what ended up happening is uh, Peyton assumes that Kip is going to rush. He doesn't. He drops back, throws a right toe. Um, Again, based on pre-snap read, I understand. I will say situational football, uh, Peyton Thorne had no excuse to even think about throwing the ball. But And and I know Hugh Freeze did say this. He shouldn't, it should not have been an option. There should not have been a throwing option because for a guy that's trying to break out of a slump and trying to trust what he sees to run the offense, yeah, in that spot, you actually probably do mentally go in saying, nope, I know what the situation says, but I have to trust myself and what I see. And he made a mistake. He made, he made One major mistake in probably the best game of Auburn football he has played at least as a passer uh, in a while, if not at all, like ever. Um, So I think that's really unfortunate. So I think the better solution would be uh, to 
run a lot of uh, schemes in which the routes all develop to the same side of the field as opposed to having them all in that box because I I think I think that's basic enough for a quarterback like Peyton Thorne I think can read you know a third of the field at a time right and if he can't we're not going to win anyway uh I and I know we're certainly not going to win running the offense the way we do now so like I said I like the progression of slowing the tempo down uh and I understand, like, yes, let's work these RPOs in, but we cannot run an RPO-reliant offense. And also the screen game. The screen game really isn't there. We got to figure out a way to push the ball into at least the short intermediate. I, I don't expect I don't expect Peyton Thorne to drop back out of five wide and, you know, progress to his third read and zip it into a tight window. I don't expect that. That's an unreasonable expectation based on what we've seen out of Peyton Thorne. But what I can expect, say, I'll just throw out a, a random one, say it's like a flood concept. I do expect Peyton Thorne to be able to read a basic flood concept and, you know, maybe hits one, two, and if it's not there, scramble off of that. We can do something. We can work with that. And I think we have to, like against Georgia, right? I don't think we have a shot in hell to win. But if we do, it's because we structured the offense completely different. Because one thing about that Georgia Alabama game is uh, their linebackers, they're crazy. And so are so Oklahoma's. Billy Bowman and Danny Stutzman are studs, absolute studs, right? Uh, and you got Kip Lewis, who, if he isn't a linebacker by trade, he certainly plays down in the box um, or can play down in the box. So, um, and I hear, I hear the cat screaming. So that's unfortunate. So I think that is my sign to shut up. So, yeah, uh, I think, oh, no, it's not my sign to shut up, actually. Uh, the clock management in the fourth quarter was horrible, objectively horrible. Uh, you come out with like 10 minutes to go, and, th- and this is where we get in the cue look, and you throw the ball on first and second down, resulting in incompletion, stopping the clock, and then you finally run the ball on third down and then you give them the ball back. I, I can't remember if they hit the deep shot before or after. I think this is actually after. Yeah, I'm fa- I'm fairly certain that this was after Oklahoma hit the deep ball to score and uh, make it a one score game. Then we do get the ball back, and still it's like we start driving the ball down the field. And keep in mind, this pick six happened with like 4:56 left on the clock. I want to say. I'll just be generous. Say you run the ball successfully twice, right from that point. You run it on that play and the next play. That's 80 seconds off the clock. And say, like, based on that point, yeah, I mean, you probably do punt. I say run the ball successfully. Say you run the ball and completely stall out your stuff to the line. You probably end up punting. You probably pin them deep and give them, I don't know, maybe about three minutes to drive down and score a touchdown. They've only scored one offensive touchdown the whole game at that point. Right? Is that right? Would have been two offenses. The point is, it's a bad Oklahoma offense. Sorry, my brain is scrambled because I, I, it's another situation where I just turned the camera on and said, oh, I'm going to talk now. So if I sound like an idiot, let me know. Uh, I just want to say that there are adjustments to be made and that we can make. There are some ways that we are limited. And Hugh Freeze is a veteran coach. He is going to learn from the way that Oklahoma game ended. And I don't think he would make the same mistakes. And if he does, well, then there are some decisions to be made, but a veteran head coach is not going to make those same mistakes again, at least not in the same fashion. So Kubelik kind of said uh, if we would have just taken a knee, uh, every uh, offensive play we had in the fourth quarter, we would have been a lot better off. And I tend to agree. And that is not that 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 that's an indicator of a poor fourth quarter performance. And I think maybe, maybe Hughes just a little bit shaky like in regards to momentum because I understand after you hit the deep ball you think oh well man I'm starting to swing back in favor of Oklahoma I don't feel that way and I actually don't even think anybody in the building felt that way I think even after that people kind of understood like oh well I mean still you know they're not going to mount a consistent drive on us they haven't done it the entire so 
Going into Georgia, what to expect? Probably going to be really ugly. Like, there's probably not a shot that we win this one. I, I would like to see some positive things. I would like to see maybe the offense get opened up a little bit. Uh, I would at least like some, if we find ourselves in some situational type deals, I would like to see better situational football because that was also a problem uh, against Arkansas. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, we got Deuce Knight. So there's that. Naeem Offered, you're next. But, uh, yeah, so I'm not as doom and gloom as many Auburn fans because I understand, man, this just isn't this isn't our year to win games. This isn't our year to contend. This is our year to build. So that being said, please uh, try your best to keep your head up and understand what the season is. Enjoy it for what it is. It's a, been a wildly frustrating ride so far. I understand that. It is. It has taken a toll on me to watch these games, but I still love this team. I love Auburn. And. I think this program that he was building has the DNA to be a long-term winner. So keep your heads in it. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Again, if you think I'm an idiot, let me know. I probably am. Uh, but, you know, I mean, to be fair, I, cho I, I actively chose to pull for Auburn in 2012. So obviously some screws loose up here. Thanks for watching. War Eagle.